Hi, I'm Katie. Hi, I'm Michelle. We are the creative designers of Low Interior Affairs. Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm a senior designer at Low Interior Affairs. Hi, I'm Eve, the creative designer here at Low Interior Affairs. Uh, I think rejections is actually like like part and parcel of life so I think we are all used to it and definitely okay to handle it. I think what a client will look for in an ID is about the chemistry and also whether our price point kind of match their budget then it's okay la, for, for rejection, no yeah. problem. And like to us, like rejection is more like um, a redirection for us. We kind of like learn from it, we borrow this skill set and then we pass it on to the next client. If I have a rejection from the leads, I will try to see uh, where it go wrong and I will share around with my colleagues and try to improve myself. Do you have any regrets? No regrets! <laughs> No, I won't say it's regrets, but I'll miss the clients because uh, some of them are really very nice to me and like every time I go to their site, um, they like cook for us or like things like this. So it's like very like heartwarming. Then after the project, so like you won't really see them as much anymore. So it's like, yeah, I'll miss them. Lah. It's not like regrets. Regrets, basically there's no regrets. There is a uh, room for improvement actually, I can say that. Basically you can see that after I hand over, the client actually quite satisfied with it. And also basically I will ask them, is there anything that uh, I can do more from there? Then they will just let me know that I can try to improve myself. For me, it's not about regrets, but I have a very heart-wrenching project oh that actually I want to share. <laughs> uh, okay, so I did a pro bono project recently. It's for a handicapped client. And uh, what happened was that we were renovating the house um, so that he could move in and you know, everything is like, like wheelchair accessible and things like that. But recently he moved back to the hospital Ooh. and we are not sure like what's gonna happen. So like I think as an ID, like I also feel attached to my clients sometimes mm -hmm. and my heart hurts la, when, I, when I hear this kind of news from my clients. I won't reject a client's proposal, but then uh, I will tell them or like suggest to them what are other ways like we can improve or we can compromise uh, what they want and like what is a better solution for it. So I won't say like no to them. I basically, I don't really reject the proposal from a client. I will try to improvise it and try to put in the uh, in the ideas that we plan. Because normally, one uh, more brain is better than one brain. So we try to compromise everything in. Okay, for me, usually I'll be a little bit straightforward. I'll say like, it's not very nice. Like, I'll try to tell them like, these kind of things. Like, yeah, for you, eh? what do you usually say? Uh, for me, I'll just, oh, from a designer's perspective, <laughs> uh, I think that, okay, for example, this colour don't go well, this colour, then I'll yeah. just try to convince my client because I feel like, I mean, they hire us for a reason, right? So, yeah. we want the house to look aesthetically, you know, pleasing to the eyes. So, we try to incorporate their ideas. Like, I think it's much. best to be honest also when like mm. things are not very nice, then we just like, uh, it's actually not very nice. Like <laughs> you want to just consider the other one instead. Yeah, yeah these kind of things for right, us. Right. Okay, so basically, uh, we don't really say it's a screw up. Uh, we say actually a hiccups. Uh. For example, that we are hacking a cabinet or hacking a wall. Sometimes, unforeseen items basically happens. Uh. Like, uh, we are doing this wall and suddenly the other wall that is a collapse or something happened there. So, it's a hiccup that we need to solve the problem on site. So, one of my projects, uh, the carpenter uploaded the uh, wardrobe already, but then the owner texts me and say like, there is no doors on the wardrobe. So, I was like, uh, cannot be la. So, when I went down on site, really don't have doors and I was like, so one day, like my painters, they, they went up to my client's place, then they dismounted the TV and then it just dropped on the floor. Like it just pop, and then like the whole thing just cracked. Thankfully, like everything went well, like it was very funny. <laughs> yeah, so that's more or less like my screw up like, in a way. Okay, I think actually for me, right, it's not really about the clients but for myself. So how I screw up is that I undercoat. So. <laughs> I mean, that's okay lah. Like, so. But in the end, come out from our own pocket what? So that's the <laughs> screw like charity up. for yeah, them. It's, yeah, it's like, it's bad. Don't do it. 
I did went up to one of the project site at about 1 plus a.m. when I went to a room because it's quite dark, there's no light, so I basically I just felt something lah, but it's not considered as paranormal lah. What's your latest time you ever been to site? I think it was 11 at night already. Oh my God, that's then when we travelled there, it was like 12. So what happens is that, you know, the first few stages of the project, right, you won't have any light source. So imagine going up to the site. It's the only light scary. source is it's really from very your scary. Yeah. And then I have to take photos for my uh, guest contractors. Well, later the Pontiana stand there <laughs> in the photo. <laughs> Trying to not shine oh my at God. anything else that, yeah. you know, it just feels very eerie and yeah, spooky. Very scary. Yeah, yeah like, like, this, like something is watching you kind of feeling in the house. You're making me scared. Okay, so <laughs> I went up, um, I did a Masonite project when we were there. I was like, oh my god, so scary. Because it's like two levels. You don't know if like the ghosts are watching you from downstairs or something like that. And, but then like, to me, I was like more scared of like not finishing the project. So like the ghosts like really didn't bother me as much. Like if not finishing a project haunts me more than that. Okay. Yeah. Ring, oh ring. my god, yeah, <laughs> like it's the cause, man. Oh my god, especially I think Kelly can relate to okay. this a lot. I think because, okay, I, I have, uh, I need to balance my social life, so I, I do hang out a lot with my friends as well. But I think my friends are starting to hate me because I'm I'm oh my constantly god. on my phone. It's like sometimes you drink it at the bar, like having fun, then like client call you, then you like, oh my god, I need to pick up guys, like sorry, then you pick it up, then you like go up the bar, like super drunk, but then you have to like, yeah, hi, yeah, it's okay, I'm free to talk to you right yeah, now. Like, so <laughs> that's, yeah. But we don't really find it like a problem. La. It's more like, oh my god, we have to like do this right now. We have to pull that, yeah. Yeah, because I think for IDs, uh, we, we have to be constantly with with our clients because they definitely have questions that, that questions, you know, yeah. they don't know like, oh, why is this worker doing mm. what? Then we need to And like usually, answer. like those evening time is when they themselves also end uh. work. So like that's their free time for them. Mm. And that's our free time as well. So like, yeah. it, it like collides. Collides. Right, right. Collides. What's the word? <laughs> clash. Yeah, clash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> I'll say okay eh. then I'll yeah. try to like merge my idea and their idea because I love it when like client has that energy like they are like I really want this like floating bed or something like that then I'll be like let me try to do it like, you know what I mean okay, yeah okay. that kind of stuff for you I mean definitely like you would have to incorporate like your your client's ideas mm. in, into like you know like your designs as well but okay I think the only part is when it's unrealistic or like really out of the budget. It's not like, oh, I want this means it can happen. Yeah. So we try to explain. Yeah, la. I think like that's yeah. where we come in. Like we, we are here to tell them like, oh, this one actually cannot. La. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, basically, I will try to explain to owner if we can accommodate both uh, the design and what they want together, join together, or I can definitely will bring out a 3D for them to look at it. And we can discuss more on that, whether is it aesthetic uh, enough or is it practical enough to combine both at the same time, then we will decide from there. I think like just for me personally, I don't really like to like keep like, hey, have you paid this month? <laughs> like, I have to keep checking on them and to me like, I don't want to be like your loan shark man, I want to be your friendly ID for me. <laughs> We also have clients that also request for even more things. Then when you reach the final payment, they are like, "Hey, why like is it like that?" But usually for this kind of situation, we, we do we do actually discuss with them like, "Okay, if you want this, it will be how much." Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they don't realize it because they keep adding, adding, adding. Mm -hmm. Then until the end, it's like, "Whoa!" Then yeah, then that's where the difficulty yes, come in. Yeah. So far, not really, but uh, a bit late. Yes, uh, there is. Uh. <laughs> So it's not considered as very difficult. Uh. Um, I'm quite blessed also that like all my clients pay up on time and like don't have any like late payment. I'm lucky. Uh. Okay. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you guys next podcast. Bye bye!